a child, do you remember what made you excited? Was it maybe the next episode of your favorite cartoon program? Or simply the smell of the, your favorite food coming from the kitchen? For me, it was a bit dusty, yet wonderful smell of braille books that I borrowed from the Library for the Blind in my hometown. It was the sound of voice of my grandpa reading a storybook to me as I curled up against him. It was the shade of orange that was often used for the cover of the children's book in Braille in, the, in Japan in 1990s. I grew up in a small prefecture in southwest Japan called Kochi. This is a very rare place that you can't really find a good review on Pantip in Thailand nowadays. <laughs> Um, I had a very loving and carefree childhood in the seven members of the family. I loved reading and to be read to. I loved eating. It's still the same. <laughs> I loved jump around like a monkey in the mountain. But there was one thing that always bothered me. That was the sense of, sense of uselessness. Like my sister, my big sister, I always wanted to help in my family. I wanted to help in the kitchen. I wanted to help in the rice field. I wanted to go to help in a greenhouse where we grow cucumber and eggplants. But every time I, I said, I want to help, my family would say, no, 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 no. You are blind. You can't see. Please don't do nothing then that's the biggest help you can give us. And I felt so small. And that was beginning of my journey. The journey to find a place where I feel useful. In my journey, there was one thing that was very, very, very helpful all the time. That was books. Even though I couldn't plant rice in the rice field with my father, I could build a log house with Laura in a book called Little House on the Prairie, written by Laura Ingalls Wilder. I could hardly see the moon in the sky, but I could see stars shining in the dark sky through the magic words on the pages. When I put my hand in the first page of the book, I could become anything. I could be a princess on an old Japanese castle. I could be a dog on the street. I could become an African girl carrying water on my head. I could go anywhere. I could be anything and I could go anytime I wanted. And this helped me in my real life, not only imagination, but to jump into the real life. When I was six, I went to a blind school in, my city, in the city center of my hometown. When I was 15, I went to uh, Tokyo to study in the biggest school for the blind in Japan. When I was 18, I was an exchange student for one year in the United States. Every time I went to a new place, I met many people. And those people made my world big like this, from a small world like this to bigger and bigger and bigger. When I was 20, my life changed because I came to Thailand for the first time. In my third year of university, I had a chance to study in Tamasat University as an exchange student for one year. And through my university and 
life beyond campus, I met many, many people from Thailand with different backgrounds. I was invited to a beautiful house, Thai style houses owned by super rich people. <laughs> yes, is it you? <laughs> <laughs> I was also hosted by very kind hearted people, yet extremely poor, living in a crumbling houses. I also met blind people like myself. And that made, this, that made me think, hmm, if I were born in the early 1980s, in a farming family, as a blind girl, but not in Japan, but in Thailand, would I have had the experiences and opportunities that I had? And my answer was, probably not. And that's why I decided to work in the social development sector in Thailand that I have to, I have come to regard as my second home. But social development is a big word, isn't it? What can a totally blind person from abroad do in Thailand to change society. Oh. Um, and that's when my idea to make a dream library project came to me. In Thailand, more than 95% of the people can read and write. But at the same time, According to the statistics, in average, Thai people read eight lines per year. <laughs> <laughs> but why? Why? Why that? It's not that all Thai people are poor, right? There are many, many reasons. But I know the biggest reason is because Thai people Thai people respect books too much. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> um, parents often say to the children, You have to read a lot, otherwise you will be stupid. <laughs> yes. Books are teachers. Books are Ment mentors and tools to study. And that's why children avoid them as much as they can. <laughs> and that's why I wanted to change this, break it into pieces, because I know books are so much more than just teachers, just tools for study. For me, books are friends where, whom I can always count on. Books are the bridge that connects me to the society that is so far away sometimes for me. But most of all, books are like food, which I love. <laughs> Some books are sweet, some books are spicy. Some books <laughs> Some books are nutritious and good for you. Some books are just junk. Sorry. But <laughs> But the most importantly, every book is lovely on its own way. And every book makes me full, but not here in the stomach, but in my heart. And I can't live without them. And that's why I started my organization called Bookworm Foundation or Caravan Nonansu. I'm sorry, that was the old name. <laughs> Moraniti Nonansu. That promote joy of reading. Reading is very small voice. Joy is the most important part. And that's um, 
we try to emphasize and brainwash children in a positive way that the, f <laughs> yeah, really, <laughs> um, books are fun. Don't be so frustrated. Okay. So I would like to show you a little bit of what we do in the video called Video Noi Ka. applause that you get, just gave to me to, to us goes to everybody who is working in Prao district about 100 kilometers from here in Chiang Mai province I have nine colleagues working to make our dream come true um, PGU our uh, library coordinator brings uh, books into life by making fun activities for children every Saturday and Sunday so every Saturday, every weekend, the library is very noisy. Pibum, uh, bookworm caravan coordinator, she fills up the mobile library truck and go to temple, schools, village market, and uh, children's hostels to conduct um, mobile library activities and also more fun activities. PN and Mano, who is working in that library as well, visits people who are homebound, like people with disabilities, like myself, elderly people, mothers who just have baby, to bring books and chit chat and let them feel that we also include you. You are not left. As you know, in the Northern Thailand, um, we are co uh, living together with dozens of different ethnic minority groups. Um, many of them have very different language to Thai. And that's why we have two early childhood literacy centers in the mountains taught by teachers living in the community to learn Thai and alf English alphabet as well as numbers so that when they go to school, they feel, oh, actually I know more than the children who learned under the Vipsama 110. And that's what we do. Many people ask me, why am I doing this? Why? is a blind woman from Japan running a library for sighted people in rural Thailand? My answer is because I enjoy it. I was and still am and will always enjoy to read, to learn from and to grow with books. And I want to share this joy with people whom I love, who is around me. Now, how about you? What do you enjoy? What do you feel excited about? And what could you do to share your excitement with the people around you? Thank you. Thank you.